He said, well, that's fine, but whatever. And I got up this, this morning and uh, got to think about a couple of things. And one of the first things I thought of was being thankful. You know, we, uh, we lost everything. We wouldn't be thankful. Nobody got hurt. You know. The house can be built back. If somebody gets hurt, they're hurt for life. But, uh, we just thank God. Nobody is hurt. <laughs> going back a little bit further back in the week and stuff I want to tell you a little story I stopped and talked to a boy I messaged him back there about a week ago when I was messaging to him I mean him and talking back and stuff it sounded, he was on his deathbed I mean he was bad and uh, thought he was going to have to have more surgery and uh, when the doctor came in, that was on a Sunday I was talking to him, and uh, he told me the doctor's coming in Monday, they would probably be doing surgery on him. So when the doctor came in, he told, told him, he said, uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking about this over the weekend. He said, I'm gonna send you home and see, and let you rest up and, and see what happens. He went back to the doctor Wednesday. Who here believes in miracles? Amen. The place had healed up. Don't have to have surgery. He's walking around. Uh, I pulled into his driveway. And they just evidently just got home. He. He's there at the truck here gathering up some of the trash he had in the truck and stuff. And I looked across that bridge and seen I thought, praise the Lord. You know. You know. Sometimes we just gotta look around and get to see them blessings. So while I was thinking on Thanksgiving, giving thanks. I've got the thing about the scripture in First Corinthians chapter ten, verse thirteen. You know, and uh, it says, "There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. That God is faithful; He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it." There's a lot of comfort in that verse right there. You know. So to get where my message is, that's how I ended up in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm going to start verse 4 and I'm going to go down through it. It's kind of interesting that <laughs> I hadn't really put, put the two of them together, but our Sunday school lesson and this lesson, it kind of kind of going to go together a little bit. You know, God gives us examples of things that happens for us to learn by. I mean, we, we can go back in the Old Testament and read up through, you know, this here starts when they come out of Egypt and uh, how he brought his people out of Egypt, how he, he kept, kept them safe as long as they obeyed him. Now we're going to see here as we go down through this that, you know, when we turn away from God and start trying to do things on our own, there are going to be consequences. They're, they're, <laughs> we're going to get a whipping. You know, so we need to 
be very diligent on doing what the Lord would have us to do. So let's start chapter, verse 10, chapter 1. says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all, uh, all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and then the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. I want to stop right there a moment and go over this here. He, he don't want us to be ignorant. He wants us to look back and see how he took his people out of Egypt, how he, how he kept them safe. You remember when they was coming out of Egypt, they had the cloud that followed them in the daytime. <coughs> in the nighttime, they had the fire that they followed in front of them. That was God's protection upon his people. You know, and, and, and remember when they come up to the Red Sea, what happened? I mean, they come up to the Red Sea, they had nowhere to go. They had a, had a mountain on this side, they had the river here, and they had the Egyptians coming in behind them. That you, what happened? God parted the sea for them, didn't he? He opened her up wide, gave them dry ground to walk on across. And he's telling them, he said, remember all this stuff that I've done for you. And they eat the same spiritual meat. They, they had God there with them all the time, feeding them. You know, they, he'd give them physical food but he gave them spiritual food too. And that's one great thing about our Lord. He gives us both feeds. He, he feeds us physically, but he feeds us spiritually too. And they all did drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank from that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. I remember as they were going through the wilderness, remember the one time they, they was thirsty, they had nowhere to get nothing to drink. And he told Moses, said, you can go smoke the rock and, and what happened. Water came forth and they had water to drink. But they also had that spiritual water of Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Why were they overthrown? Disobedience. Disobedience. They refused to rely on the Lord. The first thing that happened as soon as they got over on the other over in the wilderness while they started going, they started murmuring because they didn't have nothing to eat. They didn't have all the good food that they eat there in Egypt. But God's telling them, said, you don't need all that old garbage you're getting over there. You need what I've been giving you. <laughs> now, that's what he's telling us. That's what we need to do. We need to be getting God's nourishment, not, not the worldly nourishment. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. So as we study God's word, he tells us what we're not, what we're not to lust after, what we're not to be following, the worldly things. He's telling us that you get... You get with me, you follow me, and everything's going to be all right. But if you want to be disobedient, here's what's going to happen to you. This is what's going to happen. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it was written. The people sat down to eat, drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. You go back over in Numbers and, and read about it. It tells in there about where they they was committing fornication against God and, and uh, he killed them. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Remember when they was a murmuring against God and he sent the snakes about them, didn't he? I mean, could you imagine 
All of a sudden, there are just snakes all around us. And the thing of it is, when one of them bit you, you was dead. I mean, they killed you. But one thing about it, God made a way for them to survive that. He had told Moses, said, you build a brazen serpent, and when you get bit by one of these snakes, you just look up on that serpent and you'll live. Neither murmured ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admiration upon whom the ends of the world are come. Now he done all this here for examples to us. You know, he's telling us that, you know, I'll bring you through it and I'll be with you. But if you if you mess up and you, you start straying away, there's gonna be consequences. There's gonna be trouble. You know? I've heard people say you should never go in the Old Testament and preach out of the Old Testament. What better an example mm -hmm. of God's love for us than the Old Testament? I mean, it shows God's love for his people so much that he, he loved them so much that he would put them in bondage to get them to get them back on the right track to get back to him. But what is it that he could do to us to get us back on track? Uh, we get the veering off to the wrong side, down the wrong path. He's going to do something to get you back on that path. I'll let you know. I've been in. I've been down that wrong path, going the wrong path before. And he smacked the daylight out of me and got me back in the right path. Amen. Amen. And there are many things that he can use to do that. He knows what you love. You know, one of the things that really scares me the most is these people's got these little kids and says, well, I'm not going to bring them to church because they make too much noise. That is the worst thing to do. That scares me to death, but you know what could happen? He could take that baby. He could take that little baby from you. Then what excuse you going to have? You know? <laughs> I've told several of them, little serious, I said, you know, if I can't preach over that baby a crime, then I need to quit preaching. <laughs> you let you just bring the baby on, we'll take care of the rest of it. You go back in the Old Testament and you start studying, and you just realize how much God loves you. But also that He is a just and He will bring judgment on you for doing wrong. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. <laughs> Sometimes we can put ourselves up on a pedestal, can't we? Yeah, we can. We can think, you know, I got this under control. I don't, I don't need God. You know what's going to happen? He's going to kick that stool right out from under your feet, and you're going to hit the ground hard. You know, uh, when we start thinking we don't need God, He's going to show you, show us that we do. Right, Amen. Verse thirteen. That's one I, um, I really like. It gives us comfort. It also lets us understand that. You know, we're not going to go through this life on a bed of roses. There's going to be some dips. There's going to be some valleys we're going to end up in. But you know what? Someone else has done went through that. Yeah. You know, when Jesus Christ, when you remember when he was baptized and he come up and they, he went off into the wilderness for 40 days? What happened to him? He was tempted, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, the old devil was pouring it on him. 
So don't think you're any better than Jesus. We're going to be tempted. We're going to have trials and tribulations. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. So Jesus Christ, he, that's why he came and lived up on this earth for 30-some years. He, he understands what we go through. He had, he had to come so that he could personally understand what we're going to be put up against. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. <laughs> who, who here thinks sometimes they've been tempted way above what we can handle? We all, we all get overwhelmed sometimes. Yeah. But you know, if we put our faith in God, we trust Him through whatever we're going through, we can make it through anything. Amen. You know, we're going through this ordeal now where we, we lost everything. But you know, God promised to be there with me through it. Amen. He will be. He'll bring us up over. He'll bring us out of that valley. Because he promised it right here. The will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You know, what's the best thing to do when we get have trials and tribulation come up on us. Pray, get down and pray about it, Evan. You get down and you pray. You get humble before God. He'll bring you through it. Guarantee it. You know, uh, a lot of times people, the first thing someone will want to say is why? Why this happened to me? Why come this happened? Why am I going through this? You know, I'm a pretty good guy. Why should I have to go through these troubles? But you know what? Maybe sometimes we need to go through something just to get her, get humble back down and re remember who we need to be following. That's right. Amen. Sometimes we go through these adversities so that maybe you're going through that one of these days and I can help you through it. Maybe it's to help someone else later on. You know, we just... We can take anything out of Scripture as we go back and, and we're studying and what had happened on Israel especially when they come out of Egypt and stuff, all the, you know, all the trials and tribulations they were going through coming out and the uh, possibility of being killed and seeing that God was right there and kept them safe through, just like when they came up to the Red Sea there, they, 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 there was no doubt that they were going to be killed right there. They should have been wiped out. God opened up the sea and allowed them through. You know, he, he promises to bring us through whatever we're going through. I, I don't know about you, but that there'd be a pretty big obstacle to cross right there, wouldn't it? You come up and you, you see these people coming behind, the Egyptians coming behind you, hill on this side and the river on this side, nowhere to go. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not a very good swimmer, so I, I don't think I can jump in the river and swim from one end to the other. <laughs> I do well to swim halfway across the pool to the park. <laughs> but God will make a way. And sometimes we might not understand the way, but he'll make a way. Now it goes on down through here to tell us some things we need to get away from. It says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from my doctrine. First thing we need to do is quit putting trust in other gods. Putting trust in ourselves, putting trust in someone else. 
just like we studied there, they're putting trust in a king. They're, they're wanting a man to be their king instead of God to be their king. I'll speak to you, wise men, judge you what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless is not the communion of the blood of Christ. The bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ. For we be in many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. And what is that one bread? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar. What I say then, that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything. Anything we, we sacrifice to idols, anything, it, it, non void, it won't do you a bit of good. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Or are we stronger than he? That's what happens a lot of times. We, we become in lukewarm Christians that talks about over revelations. We start trying to ride the fence. We want, to, we want to be part of the world, but we want to be with God too. You can't do this and you can't do that at the same time. You got to do this one yeah. or this one. You can't you can't ride the fence and get by with God. When you start you start stepping over on the devil's side. You're going to get in trouble for it. And what happened when we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We get a weapon. Man. You go back and study. You know, they've been different times in Israel. They, they'd uh, turn from God and he'd have to put them in bondage. You know, and, uh, well, part of what we read about there and stuff, he just wiped them out. The one time he opened up the earth and slaughtered, I forget how many, it was a bunch. The whole family, that one whole family. All things that are lawful for me, but are, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's well. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no questions for conscience' sake. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast and you be disposed to go whatsoever set before you eat asking no questions for conscience sake so if you're asked to go to a dinner or someone and they're not believers but you go ahead and go don't ask them what the food's being if it's being sacrificed for some something else or something eat it as not knowing and you're not being held accountable for it but if any man say unto you, This is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his com for his sake, as showed it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So it's going back and saying that again, and for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything here on is the Lord's. Everything on this earth. If you go and the man tells you, well, I'm sacrificing this on the bell or I'm sacrificing this on the whatever, don't partake of it. You're partaking of the, of the devil's table. Stay away from it. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of? 
for that for which I give thanks. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And that's what we got to do. We got to give thanks to God for whatever we eat, whatever we drink of. We do it for the Lord's sake. We don't do it for idols. Give none offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they might, that they may be saved. And that there, the whole purpose of what we're to do is to see many people saved. You know, uh, we don't want to be that stumbling block. You know, we when we do something, we need to do it to the glory of God and not to, to the devil. We don't want to be a stumbling block for people. You no. Know, <laughs> I mean, how many times have you heard people say that, well, I'm not going to go to church because there are hypocrites there. And why they say that is they see you in church on Sunday, but on Monday you're just acting just like the whole world. You're, you're living as the world is. You know, and uh, there are many people that get are damned to hell because of that. You know, and that's why we need to be obedient to God. We need to be living for God. Not only on Sunday, but on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It's a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week job. It's not two hours on Sunday morning or an hour on Sunday morning. <laughs> That's one thing that kind of hurts me sometimes. You know, people I've heard say, well, you know, it's, it's 11 o'clock. We need to be finishing up. You know, we need to get home or... It's 12 o'clock, you better quit preaching, you know. It's time to quit. Well, sometimes I preach 30 minutes, sometimes I preach an hour. That's just the way it's going to be, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and the day looks like it might be a little short when we're going to finish up here soon. But, uh, you know, we just need to give God the glory in all things we do. Remember when we're in, when there's hard times come upon us, Trust in the Lord. You know, you don't don't get yourself all worked up and, and broke down over something that you can't control anyhow. Just allow the Lord to take care of you. You know, we the up the hospital. I forget what. I had a neighbor in the hospital up there that was real bad off, and uh, had the kids up there, and I think it was Bailey. He wanted to busted her mouth. H. But she was just little. And that, the kids run around a little bit in the hospital. You can't keep them sitting down quiet all the time. But she got to just, and we just all kind of in the back corner by ourselves and stuff, some of us in the family. And uh, she playing around there and she fell and broke a tooth, I believe, well, chipped a tooth or busted her mouth or something. It's been several years ago. And, uh, I said, well, I guess we'll just have to get her cleaned up and we'll get her to the dentist and get her teeth checked. That's all that happened, her teeth loosened up. So we'll just have to get her to the dentist. And one of the ladies there so said, you know, a lot of people just go nuts over something like that, but you, you know, you're just calm about it. They ain't no need to get excited, it's over with. You know, I mean, you patch them up, you put a band-aid on, you go on, you know. That's how we need to act, you know. That's the way we need to be. You know, but uh, as adversities come on us, and they will, just trust in the Lord. You know, and just, He'll get you through it. He'll supply what you need. You know, and, uh, not. I like to keep chapter verse 13. I kind of like to keep it in the back of my mind at all times, you know. There is no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. We can just hold on to that scripture right there. 
it'd make your life a whole lot easier going down through when trials and tribulations come up on us. Uh, thank you for your time and attention. I hope you said something that may help you and strengthen you.